Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to do the second part to the writing update and today I'm going to talk about all the parts of the act two in the drafting process of my book. So if you haven't watched the first video where I talk about my struggle with the first act, I will link that in this corner and also in the description below if you want to check that out before watching this video. So today it's all about act two, my struggles. I'm going to talk a bit more objective and in-depth about each act because in the first act I am a bit all over the place or the first video I'm a bit all over the place and I'm talking about all the stuff about writing my first ever draft. So I talked about this a little bit in the first video but I'm still struggling with how long each act should be. I think I have kind of an idea how long each act will be but at the same time right now I feel that my second act is too long but maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Of course I'm going to read through this book and edit it as much as I can before sending it out to my beta readers which I'm so excited to do. So right now I'm at 72,997 words and I had a goal of this book being 80,000 words and that's just about 7,003 words away. <laughs> Which, you know, is a bit mind-boggling because my book is not going to be finished at 80,000 words. And I knew this would probably be the case because I have a big story to tell and with the outline I have right now, this book is going to be 30 chapters or maybe 29 chapters and an epilogue. So I just quickly mentioned that I'm a bit late filming this video and that is because I am at 72,000 words and I'm already in Act 3 and I've already written like two plot points in Act 3 but I don't really think that matters because this just means that I have a fresh pair of eyes of my time writing the second act because when I filmed the first video in this writing update series I hadn't really gotten into the second act yet. And I'm just going to say, overall, I had a really kind of good time writing the second act. I talked about writing slumps in the first video. Just after like 20,000 words on this new draft, I hit a wall in my writing creativity and I didn't feel like writing that much. So that carried over to the second act and I had to struggle to like feel like writing every day. And like, I had a goal of writing every day and like writing 10,000 words a week. I have scrapped that goal completely. I write up to 5,000 words a week, sometimes it's 2,000 words a week. At this point, I don't really care that much because I know I'm soon at the finish line. I only have like five chapters more to write. But like, I can see the finish line. I can see where the story ends and I'm soon there. So right now I'm not thinking about word counts or word goals. So with that said, I'm going to go through all the plot points and how my experience was writing these plot points. And I must say that shout out and credit goes to Abby Emmons because I am using her template for writing my book. So I will link her channel below. She is an amazing writing channel where she talks all about outlining to editing to her own books and her own like experiences. So I will just give a shout out to her because she helped me make my book. So because this is Abby Emmons template, the names may not be familiar to you if you are not using her template because I do think that she changed some story beat names. So the first story beat is pre midpoint reactionary hero which is all about the hero or heroes, heroines in the story. It's all about them reacting to the inciting incident that happened in the last part of the first act. So this was so fun to write. If you don't know, I'm writing a YA, maybe adult fantasy. I haven't really made up my mind about that because I use a lot of description and quite dark themes sometimes. So maybe this is adult and I'm just marketing it wrong. But anyway, I'm writing a fantasy book from two POVs. Both of the inciting incidents for both characters were really like big incidents. And one of the characters is in a situation and she just wants to do good, she just wants to help everyone, she wants to save the day kind of. And her reactionary, pre midpoint reactionary hero, that was so fun to write because she's, she's really smart and she came up with this plan and it was really fun to write about that. And this is also really fun because this is kind of a build up to the midpoint 
or the plot twist in the middle of the book that changes everything. Because in a way, the characters' plans that they came up with after the inciting incidents, that builds to the midpoint and that builds to the characters and why the midpoint will crush them eventually. And yeah, with the character that I just talked about, her being really smart, she has a lot of like power over people and that was really fun to play with and she was in a really different position than the other character and because she had a lot of power and respect from people her plan was really big and it really was something, you know. So the second story beat in Act 2 is the game-changing midpoint or the plot twist in the middle that changes everything for the characters and their world turns upside down. This was really heartbreaking to write for me because a lot of anger and sorrow and grief and hate came out of the game-changing midpoint. So that was really heartbreaking to write. But something that I really enjoyed about writing the midpoint was that I knew exactly what I was doing. That's one thing. I had already mapped out everything. I knew when I was going into this book and starting writing it, I knew what the game-changing midpoint was going to be. So I had a really easy time running this midpoint. But another thing that I really liked playing with was that, for one, the two POVs doesn't have to have the beats at the same time or the same, like, chapters after one another. So one of the characters, her game-changing midpoint was like two chapters before the other character and because of her game-changing midpoint that kind of escalated to the other game-changing midpoint for the other character. And I have felt like this through the whole book that is really fun playing with and when the story beats are going to happen for each character and maybe some story beats may not happen to every character. But that is something that I have had to become used to because I I feel like each character should have their own moment in like every beat, but it doesn't have to be that way. So I just talked about how the one POV's game changing midpoint triggers the others and their storylines kind of begin to intertwine and this is the first time this happens. So that was really fun to explore. So the third story beat is post midpoint action hero. So this is when everything has been flipped on its head and the characters find themselves in a very different situation and they have to rethink a lot. And this was really fun to explore because one of the characters is really good at taking control and she is a very natural leader, you could say. And I do think that her POV is way easier for me to write just because she is very... I don't know how to say this, she is very clear with her intentions, like, to me as the writer. I know what she wants, I know her fears, I know her motivations. That's really clear for me and therefore the post midpoint action hero was really easy for me to write for her too because she's kind of a boss ass bitch and she knows what she wants and therefore I know what she wants and that's why it's always so fun to write from this POV because she knows what she wants and it's so fun to see how she will react in different situations and how she will be taking control of them. As you could probably tell one of the POVs are way easier for me to write and talk about than the other. The other is hurt she is struggling a lot and I feel like her chapters are really heavy on me, like, as the writer. She has a lot of fear, she has a lot of repressed feelings and she's just a difficult character to write. I love her character, I love, like, everything about her. She's the character that I started this book with, like, the second POV that I find more easy to write. She came along after. I had like built up this world in my head. I talk about that more in the first video. So one of the characters are really easy for me to write and the other is really heavy on my mind, you could say. But I think it's the two different characters that makes this writing experience so like fun for me to write because I can experiment with different themes in this book. It has been a really good time just exploring writing from dual POV and I haven't done that before. Like, this is my first time writing a fantasy book, like, through and through to the first page, through the last page. So the last story beat in the second act is the second pinch point, and I find the story beat really vague. And I didn't really know what I would be writing for this story beat. So this story beat is all about how the opposition or the bad guy is looming in the distance, and I'm somehow going to show my characters, or show the reader, that the bad guy is getting closer. But after the midpoint, I spent a lot of time in my character's head and just their reflections of what happened to them. Because it's a lot that happens and it's heavy stuff that happens to them. 
So I spend a lot of time reflecting on what happened and then I don't really have a pinch point. But with that said, I definitely do have like some parts of the chapters after the midpoint discussing how like the bad guy is getting closer and that there's still much to do to get away from the bad guy. So that is definitely something that is part of the, the characters reacting. But like a couple of chapters after the main point when I had really been diving deep into my character's feelings and the coping with all that happened, I started writing on the first story beat of Act 3. So I don't really have a pinch point, but at the same time I kind of do. I know that when I go back editing this project, this is probably a part that I will have to edit or fix a lot. And somehow make it a bit more like a pinch point and not just reaction. So with that said, the second act is now complete. I can't believe I'm way past two thirds of this book. And like I talked about in the beginning, I'm 72,000 words into the book, or almost 73,000 words into the book. And I think I probably hit the third act when I was like 63,000 words into the book. So I kind of feel like each act has been 30,000 words, because in the first video I talked about how the first act was probably going to be 33,000 words. And then here I am talking about how the second act is probably... 30,000 words and this third act is probably going to be 30,000 words <laughs> because like I talked about I will definitely not be finishing this story in just 80,000 words I probably will be going up to 90,000 words but the feeling the knowing that I will finish this book soon like in the next month or something that just makes me so excited and kind of like giddy because I have never finished a draft before. I have always loved writing. Like, I was the kid in school, I am the kid in school who likes writing, not essays, but like writing assignments in like Swedish. I'm Swedish, if you didn't know. And I loved writing short stories in English. I'm so happy that I will finally be having a book in my hand. It's not a complete book. Like, I know it won't be a complete book, it would just be the first draft. But then I'm going to take like two, three months off of writing this book and I've already started like mapping out a new story in my head and I have written it down. I think about this story every day. When I'm not thinking about my current story, I'm thinking about this story or the new one, which is going to be a standalone fantasy, probably adult. And another thing that I will be talking about a lot more in the writing update video that will be coming out after this when I talk about the third act is how I have to change a lot of the third act story beats because my story will not be complete after I have finished this book. There will be a plot twist in the end, there will be like little breadcrumbs of story that hasn't been like properly explained or discussed yet. And the template that I am using from Abby Amos is for a standalone book. So this is a series, this is going to be a duology I think. And it feels kind of ambitious to be writing a duology or a series as the first book I have ever written. But you know, it's all about the experience. I have learned so much from writing my first project. I'm not done yet, I'm talking about this book like I'm done with it. I'm not done learning yet, but it has just been a great time. So let me know in the comments if you are writing something, what you are writing. If you have struggled, like me, with the first act or the second act, let me know in the comments. And others can also read your comment and try to help you as well. I want to hear all about your writing projects in the comments below. And also let me know what you thought of this video and this, like, concept of writing updates. I know it's not my most popular videos on this channel, but I enjoy making them. And I want this to be a part of my channel in the future. So leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe because I post a new video every Thursday, every week, all about reading, writing and I do have a lot of fun videos planned for this year. So click the subscribe button and also the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of my videos. If you want to stick around to watch all my fun content I will be sharing with you this year. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.